Okay, so hello everybody and uh, welcome to, uh, to another Wednesday with me. Please, if you can hear me, say yes in the chat so, uh, so that I know that everything is okay and I can carry on. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you people are saying you can hear me. Yes, 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 yes. Great, fantastic. All right, so hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to another uh, smart class with me, Karim. It's uh, Wednesday today, and the date is February 7th. So uh, welcome to another Wednesday, February 7th, with me, Karim, and uh, today's smart English class. Uh, a lot of people in the chat today, which is always fantastic. Love seeing everybody in the chat. Lots of people, so I'm going to give a quick shout out to as many people as I can. So who do we have? We have Jose, Gertrudis. There is Mahmoud in the chat, Leisha, Yunus. Summer, of course, is here as usual. Summer, the reigning movie quote of the week champion. Um, Gilmara is here. Julian, of course, is here as usual. And it is Julian's birthday week. So uh, happy birthday, Julian. So his birthday is actually not today. It's on Friday. Um, but since I'm not going to see you on Friday, so uh, happy birthday, Julian, and I hope, uh, I hope you have a fantastic uh, birthday, right? I hope you have a great, great time on Friday on your birthday um, and, that, uh, and that you enjoy it. Uh, who else is here? Dalia is here. Summer, of course, as I said. Gilmara is here. We have Rosa in the chat as usual, my usual suspects. Judith is also here. Richard, hello, Richard. Marissa, I think Marissa is a new person. Thank you, Marissa, very much for coming and joining the class. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Jacqueline. Hello, Jacqueline. Nice to see you. Uh, da, 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 da. Who else do we have? I think... We have a person whose name I can't fully read, even though it's written in Arabic, but I don't think that it is Arabic. Uh, Dashti. Hello, Dashti. Welcome to the chat. Thank you very much for coming this week again. Dun, 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 dun. We have Jose, we have Leisha, I think I said those names before. Adrian is also here. Hello, Adrian. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Sizzy. Sizzy. I think, I, think, I think I'm saying that name correctly, right? Sizzy La Loca uh, says, hello, it's my first time. Well, thank you very much for coming, Sizzy. Hopefully, this will not be the last time, right? Um, oh, there we go. The guy whose name is in Arabic saying, Hi, my name is Ali. Hello, Ali. Thank you for coming to the class. Um, please, just as I said, let's keep it English only in the chat so that uh, we are respectful to everybody and everybody understands um, what we're talking about. Sizi uh, La Loca is from Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. I love Vegas, by the way. Vegas is a very cool city. I've been there with my wife once and... Um, and yeah, I want to go again. Vegas is really, really cool. I really enjoyed Vegas a lot. Um, El Musawi. El Musawi. Muhammad from Morocco. Hello and welcome to the class. Thank you very much. Um, we have Cesare, uh, I think. I think it's Cesare. Um, also, welcome to the class, Cesare. Thank you for coming very much. I appreciate it. All right, so let's, uh, let's get down to business. Um, I'll just very quickly tell you what I'll be doing uh, today and then I'll do my normal introduction and uh, I'll tell you about who uh, won last week's movie quote, uh, although everybody knows obviously who won last week's movie quote. Um, it's the same person who's been winning eight weeks in a row. Um, yeah, I know, right? Summer says something's long, wrong with the light. I don't know what's wrong with the light. Um, somebody I think was using the studio a few days ago. And, uh, and, and I had to mess with her eye. But I know what you mean. I look, I look like bluish, right? I look, a little bit, uh, I look a little bit bluish. And my only problem with this software is I just, I never remember where is the area where I can fix, um, where I can fix the, uh, the light. I can never remember where it is. I always try to find it and I always have no idea where it is. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I don't think I'll be able to, uh, to sort of change the lights too much. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that today. So sorry, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to watch me to do with my, with my little bluish tint. 
Um, Ahmed Samir is also in the channel. Hello, Ahmed, and thank you very, very much for coming. Uh, all right, so here, uh, here we go. So today um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about verb patterns, right? So this is a three-part lesson, so it might take us three classes to do this from um, Smart English Level 120, which is the intermediate level. So I'll be talking about verb patterns today, and basically we're going to be talking a lot about gerunds today, right? So a lot of talk about gerunds. Um, next week I'll probably start talking about other verb patterns, like the verb plus the infinitive. Um, and some gerunds and stuff like that. And then in the last week, we're going to be talking about a verb plus the object plus the infinitive. Right? So today we're going to be focusing mainly on gerunds. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. Right? So you guys have an idea of what we're doing today and probably the next two weeks also. All right. So as usual, you guys know you're watching me on the awesome, smart uh, English channel. And thanks to you fantastic people, we broke 100,000 subscribers sometime. Um, Sometime last week, uh, 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 Julian is, uh, I think, is trying to help me by giving me instructions on how to fix the light. Uh, in your advanced mode, go to settings and advanced. Um, don't see it, Julian. I don't have advanced in the settings anywhere. Anyway, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be too bad, right? It shouldn't be too bad. Um, <coughs> oh, Pilar says, yay, she needs this class. Fantastic, right? <laughs> so back to it. Please don't forget, you're watching us in Smart English. Thanks to you guys, we broke 100,000 subscribers. Um, so if you have not yet done so, please subscribe, hit the bell button. That's how you know when the new videos are going to be coming out, right? And you can set reminders and, uh, and sort of know um, what's going on. If you scroll all the way down, you will see me and Sean and uh, just click on my picture and it will take you to my Smart English with Kareem page, right? So I also post some videos over there that uh, are not too heavy focused um, on the lessons. So they're very short videos, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, stuff like that. And I try to make the videos uh, more fun, really, rather than um, a, a lecture or a lesson or something like that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Julian says he can't see. I think you need to refresh Julian. So let me just type that for Julian. Julian, you need to refresh because I think everybody else is fine. And in my preview, I look OK. So, um, so yeah, just refresh Julian, and it should be OK. So, uh, so yeah, so please come also join me on my Smart English with Kareem channel. Subscribe to me over there, too. I would appreciate that. And then uh, you guys can also see my personal channel on YouTube. So it's not English. It's not related to English, really, or teaching English. It's about food because uh, I love food and I love uh, cooking food. So uh, I have a cooking channel, right? So you can go there and watch me cook some, uh, some interesting dishes, right? They're all original. And, um, and yeah, they're things that I usually just cook for myself, for my wife, and things that I like to eat. So I would appreciate it if you guys hit me up on that channel too. If you can subscribe and hit the bell button, I, uh, I would love that. So um, thank you for, uh, for doing that in advance. Um, we also have a Facebook group. So you guys should come and join over there because it's, uh, it's a pretty nice group. We answer questions and we help each other out. It's called Learn English on Facebook with Smart. We also post some updates. And if you go join over there, you can get the link to our awesome Discord um, to our awesome Discord page. So um, Discord, we can talk to each other on Discord. You guys can uh, join any of these chats over here. Um, the more people that we get into Discord, the easier it's going to be for you guys to find somebody to talk with. Um, and it's pretty nice, right? So we can also use this as a platform to sort of practice English together, right? What's nice is the awesome people at Smart English, Julian and Jeremy and everybody over there, they set up some audio channels so you guys can, uh, can talk to each other. Um, not just through typing, right? So you can actually practice um, talking, which is nice. So, um, so we hope to see you there too. And actually, I will give you guys the link for the Discord in the chat if, uh, if you haven't joined already or you don't know where the link is. So I'll give you the link in the chat, and you can hit it over there. Or you can just join our Facebook group and also get to the link over there. All right. So um, this was Movie Quote. 
for uh, last week's movie quote of the week. So this was uh, from a very famous movie, and you should have easily guessed this the second that, uh, that I did the voice for it, right? So uh, this was the quote. It was, we want it. We need it. Must have the precious. Sneaky little hobbitses. They stole it from us. Wicked. Trixy. False. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, <laughs> Um, of course, I don't have to show you this. You guys know. Summer, as usual, Summer was uh, the first. Summer, you are the undefeated champion so far. So this was number nine, which is, uh, which is very, very impressive, Summer. So virtual high five to you. Good job. Uh, <laughs> Julian is saying it's embarrassing because Julian has been trying to snatch the title away from Summer for nine weeks now. And <laughs> she just can't. Summer is too fast. Too good and too fast. Summer is too fast and too furious uh, in answering the questions for, uh, for the movie quote of the week. So uh, stick around today till the end of the lesson and I will give you the new movie quote for this week and, uh, and we'll see who snatches, it, uh, who snatches it this week. Okay, so I'm done with my intro spiel. So let's, uh, let's start the lesson. All right, so we're going to be talking about verb patterns and... Um, I only see you and a blue screen. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I am so sorry, you guys. I'm supposed to do this. There you go. Now you can actually see what I'm talking about. Sorry, you guys. I had no idea. <laughs> I was talking to myself, basically. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Thanks, Julian. I, I, had, I did not notice it at all today. I have no idea why. Hashtag embarrassing. Yes, for me this time, not for you. <laughs> oh, man. But thanks for that. So hopefully everybody can see now the screen that I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. All right. OK, at least it wasn't uh, in the lesson, right? So, so you guys didn't miss anything important, right? Uh, <laughs> all right, so here we go. So let's start. Verb patterns, remember, we're going to be talking about a few different patterns. We're going to talk about a small part of it today. And uh, hopefully, then we'll continue next week and the week after that. So let's start with today, right? So today's lesson is mainly going to focus around gerunds, right? Um, so let's begin. So what is a gerund? When we say a gerund, what's that? So gerunds, very simply, are verbs. And we add ing to the end of the verb. But, and this is what makes it a gerund, it's not a verb. So, uh, so what do we mean? So very simply, a gerund is, like I said, right? it's a verb. You add ing to the end of it, but we use it like a noun in the sentence, right? So it acts, it behaves, it goes in the places where you normally would, uh, would find or see or use a noun, right? That's basically what a gerund is, right? That's, that's, that's how you explain a gerund. So like I said, right, there are verbs that end in ing and they function, right? They act, they behave, they are used as nouns in a sentence. They are found in places where usually we use a noun. And this makes sense, right? If, I, if I'm telling you that's what we use it for, or this is what it acts as, it acts as a noun, well then, logically, I can put it in the place where usually I would have a noun. Uh, Noor, hi Noor, welcome to the class. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, yes, most of you are basically saying it's, uh, it's a verb that's, uh, that acts like a noun. Yes, Rosa, that's exactly what it is. Um, all right, so here we go. So, oh yeah, Dashti has a good example. So teach and teaching, right? So teaching is a gerund, right? Basically from the verb teach. Very good. That's basically what a gerund is, right? So everybody hopefully gets um, the explanation of what it is. So now let's take a look at some gerunds. So <clears throat> in this first picture here, we have this, uh, we have this boy and uh, he's playing soccer, right? So soccer is an enjoyable activity, right? Soccer is an enjoyable activity. Okay, now notice this sentence. When I say watching soccer, watching soccer is an enjoyable activity. So again, this is the verb watch, to watch, right? All we did was we added ing, 
and we are pretending that it's a noun, right? It's it's acting, it's behaving as a noun, right? It, and it comes in the place where a noun is, right? So watching soccer is, right, an enjoyable activity. So it's behaving like a noun. Let's look at this other sentence. He is thinking about sports, right? So this boy is sitting on this ball and um, he is thinking about sports. I don't know how we know that, but let's imagine that this is what he is doing, okay? So he's thinking about sports. So again, let's try to put a gerund in this sentence. So he's thinking about. Now usually after about, you would say a noun, right? So this is, this is a good place to put the gerund. So we can say something like, he's thinking about playing sports, right? So he's not, playing is not a verb here, right? He's, he's not doing anything, right? But he's thinking about something. And usually that something is a noun, right? Whatever it is that you're thinking about is a noun, right? So that's, that's what we mean, right? So he is thinking about playing sports. And that's it. That's, that's basically two examples, very simple examples of where we might put a gerund. I hope everybody is following along. Another picture, my hobby is photography. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 um, no, Rosa, you can, you can use it with most verbs, really. Um, yeah, most verbs. Tom is swimming at this moment. Swimming is a good form of exercise. Yeah, that's a very good sentence, Richard. Very nicely done. So let's take a look at this example. My hobby is photography. Her hobby is, right? So again, right? Usually this is where the noun goes, right? In the sentence, right? So her hobby is what? Well, we can say it this way, taking photos, right? So her hobby is taking photos, right? And so that's, we're just using taking as a gerund. So, and basically it just means that it's acting as a noun in this sentence. Uh, <laughs> Julian and Summer are having a little, uh, back and forth about movie quote of the week this week so we'll uh, we'll see who's gonna win <laughs> all right let's uh, let's carry on now we can also make negative gerunds by using not plus the gerund right so <clears throat> so not comes first right so we can make again we can make a negative gerund by using not first and then the gerund right so for example she asked about not paying taxes, right? Now, the reason is because, like we were saying, right, we're, we're, this is acting like a noun, right? So the not, when we're using it with gerunds, the not needs to come before, right? So it's before the gerund. So she asked about not paying taxes. Not sleeping every night is unhealthy. Not sleeping, right? So again, it's acting like a noun, so you need the not before it, right? So not sleeping every night is unhealthy. In the intermediate level, we uh, will focus on three main ways to use nouns and gerunds. So we'll, we're going to be talking about subjects, objects of prepositions, and uh, prepositions are, you know, those usually smaller words that also come before nouns, right? So words like on, in, to, um, from, about, um, under, above, right? All, all, there's, there's a huge list, right? But you get the meaning, right? So we call these kinds of words um, prepositions. Uh, what are you guys saying in the chat? Studying, studying, um, I would say studying online, Noor, right? You don't need to say studying on the, right? So studying online is an enjoyable, or oh, is enjoyable and useful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a gerund in a sentence. Very good. Um, Yes, Bisma, that's also a good sentence. Not watering plants will kill them. Very nice. BPO meat. Hello, BPO meat, and uh, thank you for coming. English is very difficult for me. Well, that is why we are doing these lessons, right? So remember, nothing is difficult. It only needs time and practice, right? That's it. And nothing in the world is difficult. You just need time, enough time, and enough practice, and eventually, whatever really you want to do in life, you can probably do it, right? With enough time and practice. So uh, hopefully, just follow along in these lessons, try to go back and watch the earlier videos. There's a lot of other teachers on the channel and, uh, and hopefully you'll see that English can be fun without being difficult. 
Um, not practicing English every day is wrong. That's a nice sentence, Dahlia. Very nicely done. Her hobby is taking photos. Why is taking photos not in the present continuous? What do you mean, Gilmar? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, all right, let's uh, let's carry on. <coughs> right. So remember, if you want to make it a negative, right, with a um, if you want to make a negative sentence using a gerund, all you have to do is put not before, right? So before the gerund, we put not, right? Just like we said, she asked about not paying tax. She, um, not sleeping every night is unhealthy. Right, so objects of prepositions, we've talked about uh, what they are. And lastly, also, we're going to be looking at objects of verbs. And, uh, and those are the things that we'll be looking at today. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the first one. Gerunds as subjects. So the subject of the sentence is usually a noun, right? So remember, what is a subject? A subject is when usually the person that's doing the action, right? So the subject of a sentence is usually, in most cases, it's a noun. And so a gerund is also common, right? So just remember, as long as you understand that first rule, then this makes sense. As long as you understand that they act or gerunds behave or we use them or they function as a noun, well, then this, is, this should make sense, right? So we can also use a gerund instead of a noun, right? It doesn't really matter if it's a subject. If it's still a noun, well, I can use a gerund. So, for example, skates are necessary in ice hockey. Skates are necessary in ice hockey. So, in this case, we're adding the gerund uh, wearing. So, wearing skates is necessary in ice hockey. And that's it. That's all it becomes. Cricket can take a long time. Playing cricket can take a long time. Right? So, pretty simple when we're talking about gerunds as subjects. Right? Very, very simple. I don't think that that should be too hard, really, for uh, for you guys here. Now let's take a look at um, <coughs> gerunds as objects. So objects of prepositions. Objects of prepositions, usually the words after the preposition, right? So what is an object of a preposition? That's basically it. The object of a preposition, in most cases, right, usually is the word that comes after the preposition. So again, most of these words are nouns, right? That's actually why we, prepositions usually, where do we put the preposition before a noun, right? So since it's a noun, so like we said, a gerund is just basically a disguised noun, right? Um, so we use it, we can also use gerunds, right, instead of a noun. So the medal is for the race, for example. The medal is for the race. The medal. So in this case, right, what is my preposition? My preposition here is for, right? So the medal is for, well, since we put nouns after prepositions, well, it makes sense for us to put a gerund here. We can, we can totally do that. So the medal is for winning the race. The medal is for winning the race. Uh, Karim gave a medal. To the uh, to the <laughs> to the winning champion of movie quote summer um, to the winning champion I would say the reigning champion right that means uh, um, the ch yeah the champion who's in, who's who's on top right so the reigning champion um, that is um, that's not technically true I, d I never gave medals I always give virtual high fives that's what I give virtual high fives <laughs> not medals. Um, Yes, Judas, but I, I said, right? I said mostly, right? We use prepositions before nouns. Um, Gosia Eagle. Hello, Gosia, and uh, welcome to the class. Thank you very much. All right, let's try one more sentence, right? So remember, objects of prepositions, right? So this book is about retirement. This book is about retirement. This book is about, well, in this case, about, right? That's, that's, that's your preposition in the sentence, about. So I can just, to retire is the verb. So I can just use that verb, retire, and then just add ing, make it a gerund. And it becomes similar to the word retirement, which is a noun, right? So retirement is a noun. 
So I can just take the verb retire, add an ing, and use it as a gerund instead of the word retirement. So this book is about retiring, right? And that's it. It becomes retiring. Um, Eunice says, doing exercise every day is a good way to be in good shape. Yes, right? That's a gerund, uh, Eunice. Very good. Okay, let's carry on. Objects of verbs. Objects of verbs are also usually nouns. So, one more time. Objects of verbs are also usually nouns. And so, gerunds are also possible. So, for example, I love this country, right? I love this country. So, you can say something, for example, like, I love being in this country. I love traveling to this country. Um, I love eating out in this country. Whatever, right? We can put a ton of gerunds in there and it'll be fine. They started the competition. They started competing, right? And that's it. They started competing. And um, the uh, it comes from the verb compete, right? To compete. So you add ing to that and it becomes the gerund for compete. So they started competing. Uh, Nahla, Nahla says, hi, everybody. Hello, Nahla, and uh, welcome to the class. Thank you very much for coming today. Hassanea is also here. Oh, hi, Hassanea. Sorry, I didn't see your name in the chat earlier. Thanks, uh, thanks for always coming. And Alan is also in the chat. Welcome, everyone. All right, and here's a list for you guys, right? So there are many verbs in English that can be followed by gerunds. In this level, we will focus on the following verbs, right? So if you're, uh, if you're going through the SMART 120, usually in this level, these are the types of verbs that we discuss or um, expose our students to. Um, Leisure Lyric says, I love watching SMART English videos. That is awesome sauce. Thank you very, very much, Leisure uh, Lyrics. And your name is not easy to say. I think Leisure Lyrics, try saying that five times or three times fast. These are lyrics, these are lyrics, these are lyrics. It's, yeah, it, it's the L's and the U. <laughs> these are lyrics. But, uh, but thank you very, very much for your comment. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Um, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh, 300 also is in the chat. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people are coming into the lesson right now. So thank you guys for joining. Right, so I'm not going to go through the whole list. You guys can see it on the screen. You can, uh, I don't know if I'm blocking anything. You can pause the video. Um, later, or you can take a look at them. But yeah, right, I'm just going to read a few. So admit, dislike, recommend, suggest, avoid, delay. Um, if you notice, some words have uh, an asterisk at the top. So we call this an asterisk, not a star. It's called an asterisk. Um, and uh, if you watch next week's lesson, you will see uh, what they are, right? So if you notice the asterisk here, it says C Grammar 6 Two, right, so that's what we will be doing um, next week, right? So six two is the grammar for next week. So we're going to be looking at those spe special words, right, that have the asterisks at the top, and we're going to be talking a lot about them in um, in the next week. Um, yes, I know Delia, right? I love being here with all the awesome people too, right? You guys, uh, you guys are what make this class fun. And uh, I actually look forward to doing this class every Wednesday. It's the awesome people. You guys are, uh, are great. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for being awesome, you guys. All right, so this is, uh, this is uh, Jeff. Jeff, uh, Jeff is a very cool teacher here at CCEL. And uh, he's basically talking about the same stuff that we're talking about in the lesson here, right? So just for the students that like to watch videos later, usually that's why we put them in there. Um, and that's it. So actually, so as you can see, right, we started with some very basic rules. I know gerunds are a problem for a lot of people or um, a problem, but I, I find that a lot of people want to practice gerunds a little bit more before they become comfortable um, using them. So um, it's a very nice, short and sweet lesson today to the point, right? And before I start expanding right next week on, uh, on what we were talking about for the gerunds and everything, Let's, um, why don't we do some exercises, right? So this is actually part of the plan, right? So it's a short lesson, but I want to spend some time doing some exercises with you guys uh, today. So let's do that. Uh, 
Uh, Noor says reading books uh, builds, I would say, Noor. Reading books builds your vocabulary. Um, that's true, but uh, reading books doesn't just build your vocabulary. It also builds your grammar. Um, it exposes you to new ways of saying things, right? Because every author has, uh, has their own unique style or way of writing stuff or saying things or speaking. Um, so reading books is not just vocabulary. Reading books is a great way just to, to, to really boost and lift up um, your, your language as, as a whole, right? Not just vocabulary. Um, reading is one of the best things that you can do when you're learning a new language. It really, really, really is. Um, I cannot recommend reading enough. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Gertrudis uh, has a sentence. She's saying traveling is a good way for learning. If traveling is a good way. Um, yeah, I would say to learn. Um, yes, my favorite part of the class after the movie quote is the exercise. <laughs> All right, great summer. Well, here we go. We're gonna do the uh, the exercises today. I don't like to read books. Oh, come on, BPO meat. Why not? Reading books is fantastic. Reading books is awesome. Um, that actually used to be my favorite hobby to do as a child. I, uh, I read way more books than most of my friends, um, which is why I did much better than them in English in, uh, in, English in school. So uh, I can tell you from experience that reading uh, makes a big impact, very big difference if you read um, People who read, when they compare themselves to people who don't read, the amount of um, linguistic knowledge that they have is, uh, is much greater, right? So I really recommend reading. It's, uh, it really helps a lot. All right, so let's get to the exercise. I will share it with everybody today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a shareable link to the exercise, and you guys can download it um, so you can follow along with me. Typing on this phone is very annoying. Yeah, I know, I know. I hate typing on phones. You know, I actually, I don't do a lot of the things that I could be doing um, if I don't have a PC in front of me. <laughs> I just, I mean, the only thing that's okay for me to do on the phone, honestly, is, um, is to watch YouTube videos. That's it, other than that, I need a PC. I'm an old school PC kind of person. So, um, so yeah, no phones. All right, let me get you the shareable link. Let's go to advanced. You must ask the owner. <gasps> you must ask the owner. How dare you? <laughs> All right, just let me make a copy. There we go. Make a copy. Now I am the owner. You know, actually, today is, uh, today is a good day. Today is a very good day. I, um, even though I was feeling a little bit tired in the morning, I don't know why, but uh, but other than that, it's been a good day. I had a good lecture at college today, and it's Wednesday, so I get to do the stream. So it's always a good day when it's Wednesday, uh, regardless of whatever happens during the day. And uh, what's nice also is after the stream today, I am going to go out for dinner with, uh, with my wife. So I'm looking forward also to that. All right, let's copy this. Yeah, and all right. So I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna paste the link to this uh, document for you guys in the chat. Make sure that you download it. Uh, make a copy for yourself um, so you can type and uh, and join and follow along with what I am doing. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Zayd is, is quoting Ice Cube. Today was a good day. Uh, when you give someone advice about learning language, what do you recommend? Like I said, reading, reading, reading. No, reading is a is a great uh, reading is a great way really to expose yourself to um, to a lot of the little things in in languages, right? Because because every author writes in a very different way, in a very different style, and it really just it opens up your mind to to a lot of different things, right? Or, or different ways of saying the same thing. Or, oh, I didn't know that you can speak like this. Uh, it's just, it's very interesting, right? 
Uh, Julia says, Kareem, your reading habit has impacted, impact, impacted, I think, your uh, occupation because this reason, because of this reason, you have chosen to be a teacher. Actually, <laughs> all right. You know what? I'll tell you. Uh, I'll, t I'll tell you a very short story. Um, I ended up being a teacher just by pure accident. I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, I think at some point in my life, when I was a, when I was a kid, or when I was a, or when I was a teenager, um, I thought very briefly about it's like, oh, maybe I can be a teacher. Teacher uh, teaching is a is a is a is a fun job. Um, but actually, it wasn't. It wasn't the, the thing that I wanted uh, to do right uh, right out of uh, college or university. Um, the only reason I ended up being a teacher is just yeah, it's just luck. To be honest, it's just by pure chance. Um, even though it was my very first job, right? My first official job after I finished university was an English teacher. But <laughs> it was just it was just luck. I didn't really. I, I wasn't. It wasn't a plan. It wasn't part of my plan. But uh, but I have to say I do enjoy it, right? Like I really do enjoy uh, teaching. I think it's a very, um, I think it's a privilege, right? It's a, it's it's really a privilege and it's an honor to be a teacher, um, because people give you their time, right? And time is very precious, um, and it's it's the best way really to connect. I think on a very human level uh, with people, right? Um, in a classroom or when you're uh, teaching. Because teaching is learning as much as it is about teaching, right? Like I always say this, I always say I, I love teaching because I also learn a lot of stuff from my students. Um, so it's a sharing experience, which is nice. Sharing is nice. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how I ended up uh, being a teacher. It was just, it was pure accident, pure luck, really. I didn't, I didn't really plan it. Um, Oh, thank you, guys. Everybody say <laughs> this accident turned out well. <laughs> well, thank you. I will not. Uh, I will not argue with that. I'm pretty happy where I am. All right. So let's. Uh, all of you have the yes. All of you have the chat. I can see it. All right. So let's start very, very basic. Right. So let's let's do the first exercise. Exercise for exercise one. Right. So exercise one should be very simple. Um, and let's do one, two, three, four, right? So let's do the first four, which means B, C, D, and E, right? So B, C, D, and E, right? So just type B and your answer, C and your answer, D and your answer in the chat, and I will see you guys in about... Um, one minute, you really don't need much time for this. This is super easy, right? One minute and I'll be back. Um, let me start, actually before I start this, let me disappear. So, <gasps> my magic is not working. Hold on, let's do this again. Ah, oh, there we go, magic.
Okay, so uh, let's see what you guys are doing. All right, so we have a few words up here that uh, that you guys could have used for uh, for the uh, for the questions. Excuse me. So uh, so let's see what you guys said. All right. So first one, staying in shape is important to me. This was the given example. Let's uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Right. So autographs from famous athletes is my hobby. Right. So I need a gerund to go before autographs. Right. Autographs. Whoops. Autographs are um, when somebody famous or a celebrity they sign something for you. Right. That you keep as uh, as a souvenir, basically. Right. So um, let's see. What did you guys say? So B, 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 B. I see a lot of getting, 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 getting. Yep. So a lot of people are saying getting. Uh, Hassaneya, Garima, Rosa, Samar, uh, Shravya. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Anybody else for B? Somebody said having. Um, mm, 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 getting, get. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Very well. Um, very well done, I mean, right? So the answer is getting, right? So getting autographs uh, from famous athletes is my hobby, right? So usually we say, hey, I got blah, 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 such and so, whatever's autograph, right? So I got a famous person's name's autograph, right? So yeah, so getting autographs from famous athletes is my hobby. So very well done. Everybody got that right. Virtual high five to everyone. Next one, C. Um, so, <laughs> so we have a, we have what? What's wrong with? Oh, look at the poor teddy bear. Looks, uh, looks very depressing. But um, so, what do we have? It says a cold in the summer is not very fun, right? So something, right? We need the gerund here. A cold in the summer is not very fun. This is C. So let's see what you guys said for C. So. Um, Hassanaya mm, 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 mm. says catching, Rosa catching, Samar says having. Um, Zaid says, I oh, was no, sorry, that was for B. Uh, Pillar says having also. Sizzy. Oh, Sizzy, I didn't notice your comments. Sorry. Um, I'll try to explain the next exercise uh, better so you know what what to do exactly. Um, catching, business is catching, Garima catching, yes, right? So most of you are, are giving the correct answer and the correct answer is catching, right? So you need to say catching a cold. And this is this is what we call in English a uh, collocation, right? A collocation are words that we usually use together, like taking a bath, for example, right? Um, things like that, right? So catching a cold is a very common collocation. To catch, we use the word catch with a cold, very common collocation. So catching a cold in the summer is not very fun. Now, some of you said having, right? That's not a very common thing to say, right? We don't say, you can say I have a cold, yes, I know, but um, in this style of sentence, I would say it's more natural to say catching a cold in the summer is not very fun. Um, even though having a cold in summer is not very fun is a correct sentence, right? So you, you could say having a cold in the summer is not very fun, right? It still makes sense and it works grammatically. I'm just, I'm saying it's more common for people to, um, to say catching a cold um, in summer. Some people might even use getting. So getting a cold in the summer is not very fun. And that still works. It still makes sense. So uh, good job. Number D. What do we have for D? It says rugby is quite dangerous. And um, yes, it is. So actually, I used to play rugby a very long time ago. And um, I, 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 I disconnected my, my shoulder um, playing rugby. So uh, it is very dangerous, but it's, uh, it's also a lot of fun. I really uh, I had a great, great time playing rugby. Um, and this was a long time ago in, uh, in New Zealand. So. Um, so yeah, I used to play rugby there. So rugby, for the people that don't know, rugby is very similar. Um, it's not very similar. I shouldn't say that. It's not similar to American football because the rules are different. The the um, What you wear is very different. Um, and the rules in general just are completely different, right? But most people compare it to that because they use a similar looking ball, right? So a uh, rugby ball looks like this, 
right? So this is this is a very standard, typical rugby ball. And as you can see, it looks, it has the same shape, right? It's a bit similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's a bit similar to an American football. Um, but yeah, it's a dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous game, but it's, uh, it's fun. I like, I like playing rugby. So let's see, what did you guys say for D? Uh, Rosa says, playing, 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 playing. All of you are saying playing, right? So everybody basically in the chat uh, said playing, and you guys, you guys are correct. So playing rugby, boom, 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 is quite dangerous if uh, if you're not if you're not careful. Um, yeah, playing rugby is quite dangerous. Uh, Judith is asking, playing rugby does not require hats. You mean helmets, right? Um, hat, a hat. This is a hat, right? But uh, this will not help you very much in rugby. Uh, what you want to say, Judith, is a helmet, right? So a helmet is made to protect your head. Um, and no, we don't. Uh, actually, you don't wear any kind of protection in in rugby. So there's no. Um, American football players usually wear some kind of pads under their uh, under their clothes, right, to protect their shoulders, their chest, their backs. Um, but uh, but no, there's there's we don't wear anything in rugby. That's why it's uh, that's why it's dangerous. <laughs> so yeah, that's why it's dangerous. Uh, oh, you're very welcome, Dashti. Dashti has to go, unfortunately. Uh, but thank you very much for coming to the class. At least you were here for the. Um, the main part of the lesson. Um, so thanks, thanks a lot for coming, and um, yeah, enjoy your day, Dashti. Thank you very much. Um, so playing rugby is a dangerous sport. Last one is um, this guy from Deutschland, which is Germany, is uh, and that's the German flag, standing in front of a stadium, and it says something. The World Cup of Soccer must take a long time, right? Something for the World Cup of Soccer must take a long time. Now, of course, you can say a lot of things here, really, right? But we were choosing from the words in this list at the top of the document that you guys have, right? So if I were to choose one of these words, let's see first what you guys said. So E, 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 E. Where is E? See, you guys keep, I, t that's, I tell you to answer specific questions because when you answer more, like I, I, I love that you want to answer more, that, that, uh, that's, that's nice. I love that you guys are actually <laughs> very active students. But then it makes it hard for me to find the answers that I want in, <laughs> in the chat. So, uh, so let's, where's E? Uh, winning, uh, somebody said winning. Um, winning the World Cup, so it might take a long time. I guess that, yeah, okay. I guess that depends on your point of view of time and what is long and what is short. But, um, but in context, it could, uh, it could work. Bisma, I would say, winning. Uh, what else are people saying? Organizing, 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 organizing. And actually, yes, that's the one that I wanted, right? So for me, out of those words that were um, in the list at the top, I would say organizing makes the most sense, right? It's the one that I think makes most sense. So organizing the World Cup of Soccer must take a long time. And that's true, right? Because it, it does. It's, it's a very complicated uh, thing to, uh, to organize uh, a World Cup. Um, there's a lot of logistics and money, and, and there's just so much stuff that you have to organize before, um, before the World Cup. Dum, 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 dum. Competing, competing, competing. Um, I, what, what, what are you asking why about, Judith? I'm not sure what are you asking me about. Um, are you asking why you can't say competing um, here? If that is your question, um, well then, because if you say competing, um, you need to say in. Right, so you, you you have to say something like competing in the World Cup, right? So that's why competing doesn't uh, it doesn't really fit in this sentence. Um, if that is what you were asking about, I'm not I'm not totally sure what you're asking about. You just you just said why? <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. Um, Anchal music. Oh, hi Anchal. Hi, welcome to the class. You are coming at almost the end of it, but uh, thank you for coming anyway. 
Um, I appreciate it. Um, don't forget, you can always watch the lesson after the video is done. Um, they live on YouTube. So you can, you can watch them as many times as you want. Um, Arthur also, hi Arthur, same thing I just said to Anchel, right? Thank you for coming, but uh, it's the end of the lesson. So uh, if you want to watch it, don't forget, you can always watch the lesson on YouTube after I am done. Um, organizing soccer, organizing soccer. What are you talking about, Judith? Let's see, where's the soccer example? What soccer example, where is it? Um, um, another person is asking about why this one. Um, hmm, what's going on here? Are you guys, maybe you guys are confused about the meaning of the word organizing? So here, organizing just very, very simply means arranging, right? Making arrangements so that the World Cup happens, right? So a lot of stuff happens in that. Um, you have to first, uh, you have to choose a country and then the country has to do some specific things to meet the standards, right? Uh, some countries have to build extra stadiums. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the players and the marketing for the things that are going to happen. Um, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a lot of things that you have to arrange, right? To have a successful World Cup. So uh, organizing just means that, that's what it means. Um, if, you, if that's what you guys are asking about, um, uh, if, if it's something different, please make your question a bit more specific, like make it a, make it a more specific question um, so, that I can, uh, so that I can answer it properly. Mm -mm -mm. Postponing the World Cup of Soccer must take a long time. I would say no to that because why would it take a long time just to postpone the the action of pos postpone right to postpone you don't really need much time to do that right um it's a decision you just say hey we're not gonna do the world cup we're, we'll s this this week we'll start next week there decision done right so it's that's why i wouldn't say postponing really in this sentence um It's 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 quite a long period of time. Um, depends on what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, Gosia. Um, but a lot of things are quite uh, take a quite a long period of time. Um, guys, that's all, all I'm saying about this example. Is organizing means arranging, right? That's why. For, so from from my point of view, I think this one fits, right? It makes sense to say organizing the World Cup of Soccer must take a long time. Also, and I think this is my mistake. Um, I think you're only supposed to use each verb in here once, right? Um, and if you look at the rest of the examples in the, in, the, in the exercise, you're probably going to use some of the other words that you guys used in other places, right? So um, for, for, from the words that we have in this list, and if we only can use words once, I would say organize is the one that makes sense for this example. Um, Organize means to put on, yes, or to arrange, right? To make arrangements so that something happens, right? Um, that's, that's basically another meaning for organize. Okay. Let's do a different exercise, just, uh, just to change things up. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, this uh, this one is a little tricky, right? So let's uh, let's uh, let's try this one. Okay, so let's uh, let's pay attention to what the question is asking, right? So complete the sentences with the missing preposition, right? So you're going to have to choose the correct preposition for the sentence from this table, as well as, right? So you're going to do two things: you're going to choose the preposition, and you're going to write the verb in parentheses, right? And parentheses, you guys, just very simply means those things, right? those things right so some people might call them brackets um, or they're also called parentheses right so complete the sentence with the missing preposition from the table and you are also going to write the verb in the parentheses right so the verb 
like this, right? They're going to give you a verb in the parentheses. This is the verb that you have to use in the sentence. And then you have to choose the correct preposition to go with it. Um, of course, we're talking about gerunds today. So um, when you choose, so the verb has to be in its gerund form, right? Some sentences require two verbs. Some sentences require two verbs. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so some of you are saying that you didn't even know that there was a list of words at the top. Yeah, sorry, maybe that was a little bit of miscommunication from my side. Um, I apologize about that. But let's, uh, let's, go for, uh, let's go for number two, right? So number two, one more time, complete the sentences. You're gonna choose from, uh, from this list, sorry. We're gonna choose from this list of prepositions. And then you have to change the verb that they will give you for each sentence and make it into a gerund. So same thing, let us do the first four, right? So B, you have to choose the correct preposition and then you have to use quit in its gerund form. And let's do C and D and E, right? So the next four, same thing again, you guys, right? So B, C, D, and E. I'll give you two minutes for, uh, for this one. Because um, I don't think it's that much harder than the first one, right? But, but it's a little bit harder. So two minutes. I'll give you guys two minutes. Remember B, C, D, and E. I will get out of your face. And uh, I'll play some music and I'll be back in two minutes. Good luck.
Okay, let's uh, let's see what you guys do are uh, are doing. Dun, 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 dun. So uh, let's see. Mm, mm, mm. All right, there we go. I found it. Okay, so the first first exercise says uh, what? It says she always thinks. Then you have to choose the correct preposition and you have to use quit in its gerund form. So, a lot of you are saying for be about quitting, um, about quitting, about quitting. Some, some of you choose, chose sorry, some different prepositions. So somebody said in quitting. Somebody else said, uh, actually, no, again, about quitting, about quitting, about quitting. Somebody said to quitting. Um, boom, 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 boom. About, 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 about. Yeah, so the correct answer is uh, it should be about quitting, right? And there's a very simple reason for this. Usually, or basically, when you say think, think about it, right? So actually, I just said it now without noticing, right? So when we say think, we always say think about. Right? That the preposition that we use after the word think is usually about, right? Even in the question form, right? Think about it. See, I said it again. What do you say to people? You say, hey, what are you thinking about, right? So about is the correct preposition that you want to use for this one, you guys, right? So she always thinks about. And then, of course, the gerund is very easy. All you have to do is just add ing to the word, right? So the gerund is not really the tricky part in, in this exercise. What's important in this exercise is that you get the correct uh, preposition. Okay, next one is uh, C. So let's see what C says. Let's see what C says. That, uh, <laughs> that sounds uh, weird. All right, so a helmet is a helmet, right? This is a helmet. So a helmet is something your head. A helmet is something protecting your head. Now think about what are we doing in this sentence. I'm describing you, or I'm, I'm describing to you, sorry, um, the reason for something, right? That's what's happening. I'm describing the reason for something, right? Well, hey, what's the, what's the point of this helmet? Oh, it's for, right? So if you notice, that's the preposition that you guys want, right? So you're supposed to say for, and let's see. So, yep, Summer got it for protecting. Very good. Rosa got it. Very good. Hassaneya, uh, Bisma, for, for. Yes, yes, that's it, right? So that's that's the correct preposition. All you need for, for this one is for, right? That's the preposition that you want. So, for protecting your head, right? So just remember, when you're describing the reason for something, just like I'm saying it right now, right? That's the preposition you use, for, right? When you're describing the reason for something. So a helmet is for protecting your head. Um, Hamouz, hello Hamouz, thank you for saying hi. Welcome to the class. Um, all right, let's carry on, the next one. Snowboarding is something or something else. So, what do you guys have for D? D, 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 D. Um, D, 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 D. Okay, there we go. So, Dahlia says, like surfing or skateboard. Where's the other gerund, Dahlia? So, uh, like 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 surfing or skateboarding you should have said uh jacqueline says like again like surfing or skateboarding summer um rosa bisma um some of you chose a different preposition that is not correct right so what uh, what you actually want right so the preposition for this one is like because think about the sentence what are you doing you're comparing something right so you're saying oh snowboarding is similar to what? That's what you're saying, it's similar to, right? So what's the preposition that we can use that will give this meaning? Like, right? So snowboarding is like what? Well, it's like surfing or 
same thing skateboarding right so be careful some of you I noticed you did the first gerund correctly and then you wrote the second um, the second time you did not make it into a uh, into a gerund right so be careful with that please snowboarding is like surfing or skateboarding right both of them need to be gerunds here because we're comparing right so we're using like because I'm trying to show you what it's similar to right so like is the preposition really that makes that meaning here last one what is the difference something and something care of a child and then you want to use raise and take so what did you guys say for e e e e e e e uh, Dalia says between uh, raising and taking grocery. Sorry, where is uh, this? Is E. This is E. Bismuth says between again. Jacqueline between. Pilar says between. Um, any, any other E's out there? Rosa says between. Darwin. Oh, Darwin. Hi, Darwin. I didn't see you in the chat there. Welcome uh, and thank you for coming, Darwin. Uh, between, 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 between. Yes, right. So that's that's is or that is the correct preposition that you want. Why? Because we're talking about the difference, right? So when you are trying to compare two things, that's usually the preposition that we use, right? What is the difference between, right? That's always going to be the way that you ask this type of question. If you say what is the difference, right? Then 90% of people will say between, right? So what is the difference between this and that? Hey, what's the difference between this and that? Um, between raising and taking. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's basically the answer, right? So what you want to say is, what is the difference between, right? Raising and, like, like the example before it, both of these words need to be in a gerund form, right? So the difference between raising and taking. Um, care of a child, right? So the difference between raising and taking care of a child. That's it. That's, uh, that's the answer. So as you've noticed, right, prepositions make it a little bit tricky. Um, not because it's hard. It's just because you need to know what preposition usually do we use for what purpose, right, or for what function in a sentence. And that's actually a good topic to talk to you guys about. I should make, I should make a lesson on prepositions. Um, mm, yeah, I think I'm going to make a lesson on prepositions to, um, to, to do with you guys. So look for that sometime in the future. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. I think I will end it uh, here today. So... Uh, <laughs> You guys should be amazed. Today's class is actually not uh, not as long as my usual classes uh, as my usual classes are. Um, oh, you guys are welcome. You guys are very, 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 very welcome um, as usual. Um, as usual, seriously, this is um, I, I thank you because uh, because I have fun every Wednesday. I love doing the stream. You guys make it awesome for me. And uh, I always have something nice to finish the end of my work day with uh, when I do these uh, when I do these streams. I have a lot of fun and uh, I really enjoy it. So thank you guys. And this is just water. <laughs> so thank you. I did not mean to um, to put some ice in my mouth right now. Um, I just tried to take a small sip and some ice went in and then well, I didn't want to spit it back in the cup on video that's not gonna look very nice so I have to uh, I have to chew it sorry for that uh, <laughs> all right so oh great I'm glad that it was useful uh, I'm glad that this uh, was useful to you so don't forget actually next week we are going to continue right so next week we'll be talking about verb patterns too so make sure you guys uh, revise and brush up on verb patterns one because it's it, we're just going to add more information to this next week and uh, depending really on how long that class is going to be i think it's longer a little bit than today's class so yeah we'll probably also just do that next week 
Um, and then we will finish with verb patterns three. So, um, so yeah, so I hope to see you guys over the coming weeks, and we will be doing that. Uh, ooh, Mahmoud says he's a new subscriber. Uh, thank you very much, Mahmoud. A virtual high five, and welcome to the family. Um, Noor is uh, saying, what, what point, or what is the point that you enjoy to become a teacher? Do you mean uh, what do I like or what do I enjoy about being a teacher or uh, or I don't know is that is that the question? Uh, oh, you're very welcome, Pilar. Um, you're very very welcome. I'm glad that you uh, the lesson was helpful to you. Um, sure. Um, see you next week. Pilar has to go. Uh, Nora saying yes. Um, like I said, honestly, the thing that I enjoy most about being a teacher is um, it's um, I don't know how to explain it. What I really like about being a teacher is the uh, is the human is uh, it's the human connection that you make with uh, with people because um, because as a teacher, what do I want? I want to basically communicate something to you and uh, I want what we call an, um, an aha moment. Um, you know, when, when people suddenly understand or they realize something, right? Aha. Um, that's the best feeling, honestly, um, in the world. And um, because people realize that you're giving them something of value to them that's useful directly in their day-to-day -day lives, um, you just, you build a very it's a it's a it's a very interesting I think uh, relationship that uh, teachers have with their students right it's almost like uh, a parental relationship right you feel responsible and uh, and that's a, it's just a good feeling I really I, I like interacting with the students and I like uh, I like really also learning right especially um, teaching English as a second language in a country like uh, Canada or in Vancouver um, gives me the opportunity to really meet um, people from everywhere like um, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Indians, uh, Swedish people, Brazilians, Mexicans, um, people from a lot of African countries, a lot of European countries. It's it's amazing how many different cultures I get to um, I get to see and sort of learn about and and experience on a on a day to day basis. So um, so yeah, that's that's uh, it's. It's the good feelings, right? That's the best thing about being a teacher. When, uh, when you get those good feelings of, um, of human connection, right? Between other people. It's nice. Um, <coughs> uh, Gertrude says, you teach cooking too. <laughs> well, yeah, basically, right? If you follow, yeah, I guess that's a kind of teaching also, yes. I teach uh, or I share my recipes with, uh, with the world. And I guess it's a, yeah, that's, that's a type of teaching, yes. It definitely is. Uh, oh, thank you very much, BPO. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Okay, so uh, let, me, uh, let me wrap up this class. So um, I don't need, uh, or actually, I'll leave that for next week. I'll leave that open for next week. Uh, I'll save it in the window. Okay, so... All right, you lovely people. So as you all know, I'll just uh, do my outro and I'll do movie quote of the week and I will let you fly away. So uh, please don't forget, if you have not done so yet, subscribe to the awesome Smart English channel, which is where you are watching this class. Um, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. We just broke 100,000 subscribers about a week or two weeks ago and we are super excited about that. So thank you awesome, awesome, awesome folks out there for, uh, for helping us to reach um, this point and uh, hopefully we are going to continue um, to infinity and beyond like uh, Buzz Lightyear says. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Also, as I always say, go all the way down, find my face and well, don't hit it, but you can, you can boop it, right? So boop on my face. And that will take you to my Smart English with Kareem page, right? Where you can also check out some other English-related stuff. Um, and you can see Vancouver, right? So you can see me sort of wherever I am in Vancouver and, uh, and weird things like, uh, like that. 
My personal channel, like you guys were mentioning in the chat, Food AF, please, uh, I'll be honored and I'll be very happy if you guys uh, come and check out my food channel. It's, uh, I just cook stuff that I like to cook and things that I like to eat. Um, and I don't follow recipes, right? So this is all from my head. I just cook the food that I like to eat. Um, so come and check me out over there. Should be, uh, should be fun too. Don't forget the Facebook group, Learn English on Facebook with Smart. The name is a little long, I know, but it's not too hard, right? So Learn English on Facebook with Smart. Um, come and join us over there. You, uh, we usually post stuff and people are very active in this group, right? So people are always talking to each other and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's pretty nice. You'll also find the link to the Discord, again, for the people who came uh, late today or if you did not know about it or you haven't heard, I am going to paste this link for you and uh, you guys can come and join us here, right? So right here on Discord, we have a lot of uh, channels that we set up for you under Smart. You guys can talk to each other. You guys can practice uh, talking with audio, right, to each other. We have a lot of different chat groups that we've created for different topics. Um, it's a little bit slow at the moment, but that's normal because uh, people are still joining, right? So um, hopefully, tell your friends, right? The more people that we get in there, um, the more active it's going to be. So uh, looking forward to that. All right. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. So let me erase last week's movie quote and uh, let's get ready, people. Where is Summer and Julian? <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Sizzy says, I can't open the Google website. Uh, what Google website? I think you mean, uh, oh, are you talking about the one for the, um, where, uh, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go? Are you talking about uh, this? Are you talking about the lesson? Um, why? You should be able to open it if you click on the link. The link is anyone who has the link can see it. Yeah, you should be able to. Um, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat again, uh, Sizzy. And um, and yeah, you should be able to open the document uh, normally. If you if you mean that you can't type in the document, yes, that's normal, right? If you want to type in the document, you need to make a copy, right? So very simply, when you open the document like this, go to File and then find make a copy, right? So you make a copy that is your copy and then basically you can do whatever you want on your copy, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> Julian was just saying, oh, Summer is not here and I can win. And literally as he was typing it, Summer just made a, <laughs> Summer made a high five gesture. So sorry, Julian. Uh, I don't think Summer's gonna let this go. That's her thing now, you can't take it away. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's get ready, right? So I'll do movie quote of the week and um, and I'll end today's class. So uh, let me just take this out of the screen so you guys don't see it. And uh, I'll do the movie quote and then I'll put it back on the screen for, uh, for a few seconds so you can see what the movie quote is. And, uh, and that's it, we'll wrap up there for today. All right, so here we go, movie quote for today. So these are two people uh, sitting in a car and, uh, and one person is, uh, is talking to the other and then the other person is going to reply, right? So the first person says, <clears throat> hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. And then the other person says, Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. And then he puts on some glasses. And, uh, and that's it. That's the scene, right? So that's, that's the movie quote. One more time. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? We don't need roads where we're going. Or sorry, where we're going, we don't need roads. And then he puts on... Um, some funky looking sunglasses. Uh, and that's it, that's the quote. So I'll put it up on the screen for a second. You guys can check it out. Uh, there it is, right? So one, two, three, four. And that's, uh, that's all you're gonna get because you guys, uh, I know what you're doing. So I'm gonna make it a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, harder for you. <laughs> Don't tell me in the chat. Don't tell me in the chat. If this is your first time here, please, the rule is you cannot tell me in the chat. You have to wait until the video is over and then you have to put it in the comment section below the video. So don't tell me in the chat. I will ignore it and I will not read and I will probably delete the answer because you're helping others. All right, so let me go big. I don't need the screen anymore. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so that's it, you guys, for uh, for today. Um, I will see you next Wednesday at the same time. So don't forget, next Wednesday, every Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Vancouver time. And um, oh, Rosa says she knows it this time. Yeah. All right, Rosa, try to be faster. Try to be faster than Julian Summer. Let's see who's uh, let's see who's gonna get it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get out of your face. I will uh, play some music for about one minute and then I'll close the video, right? So uh, be quick. Uh, <laughs> all right, so thank you guys so, so much for, uh, for coming this week and attending the lesson with me. I look forward to next week and uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, hanging out with you guys every week. So thank you so much for that. And uh, sure, Jillian, I'll play your song, no worries. Um, um, you mean the song that you like? Like, uh, like uh, what's it called? Hi, or, or the song that you made and you want me to play? If that's what you're talking about, I need the link. So send me the link, please. Um, or you can put the link later at the bottom of, of the comment section. All right, so that's it. Until I see you guys next week, good morning, good evening, and 